Right, the first thing I'll do when I get to the swim is uh, have a little lead about. The last thing I want to be doing is setting up on a great big dirty snag, losing loads of end tackle, my brand new bopper that I'll get onto in a little bit. The sort of area I'm looking for to fish is the gradual, I'm looking for the slope to finish and then to find the flat riverbed where the fish should be sitting against the, the slope. Hopefully the fish will be pushed in nice and tight, just sitting there waiting for a bit of food to come along. Looking for sort of clean gravel. So I'll have a cast, I'll start off short and then I'll work out a little bit further, just feeling the lead down to find that deeper water. So just feel it down, that was pretty shallow that was. Went down with a good thump, but that is absolutely clean loads of rattling there. So I'll go a little bit further. It's always best as well if you pick a marker on the horizon so you keep working your way out in a straight line. So at the minute I'm aiming at an oak tree on the far bank. So I'm just going to go again a little bit further and that was definitely deeper. That was definitely sort of three, four foot deeper that was. And again, that is lovely and clean. All gravel. We're actually at the bottom of a weir today, so that should be, there was a little bit of a lock up then. So it should be all clean gravel. So I'm gonna go a little bit further again. I'll go over it this time just to make sure I'm not missing out on a big channel. No, same sort of depth, but there's definitely a difference to the first cast. Again, it's nice and clean. So I'm gonna have a couple of chucks downstream to make sure I'm not fishing down to any snags. So if I hook a big fish and it starts kiting downstream, I know that I can play it safely without locking up. Always best to do this sort of leading up with a, I find on a big river to use like quite a big lead so it gives you a good contact with the bottom. That's all clean again I'll give one more chuck further downstream and then I'll, I'll find where that ledge is. All a very similar depth And we're pretty snag free by the looks of it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm just gonna have a look where that shelf is. It's a nice underarm cast. So I'm just gonna pop the clip on now, because I'm happy that that is in that, that that drop off from the first channel. Super. And you'll see when I hit the clip, I'm actually pulling the rod back in the air. So what I'm doing, instead of just letting it hit the clip like that, and then 
I haven't got a very good drop. I can't feel how the lead's going down. So what I do is, as it's in the air, pull the rod back, give yourself some slack line to follow the lead down. Right, now I've, got, I've put my clip on. I know the distance that I want to fish to. I'm going to wrap my lead around the first distance stick. Something that you don't see many river anglers doing, but on a great big piece of water like the Trent, it's well worth doing knowing that you're feeding over your, your baited line really accurately. Any fish coming up the river, they're going to be coming up in a nice straight line. That's one, two, three, four. That's pretty simple as well, four and a half. So that's sound. So I'm just going to wind that back on. And then I'm going to grab my buffer rod, which is my baiting up rod, and do exactly the same. So I'm going to wrap up my bait dropper rod now. So I'm going to go the same distance, wrap that round. One, two. So now when I cast my feeder in, it will be exactly over the loose offering that I've put in with my bait dropper. Right, now we're going to touch a little further onto our new products. And this is our new style of bait application, our brand new bait dropper, which is going to be called the bopper. This is the large bopper and it, it requires quite a dedicated or unique bit of tackle to, um, to use it effectively and to make sure that you don't keep losing the tackle because this empty, it's got interchangeable weights, but as it comes is 120 grams. So when it's loaded with bait, you could be chucking 200 grams into the river. Um, so that is going to be released with our 65 pound braid, our bopper braid, which is not just, you don't have to just use it for, for baiting up. It's, um, you've got 150 meters of braid, it's 65 pound. So I know a few anglers that have been using that for their pike fishing as well this winter, and it's been brilliant. Um, onto the rod, this is a five and a half pound test curve, 10 foot rod. Again, up to the job, five and a half pounds, you're casting a lot of weight. The last thing you want to be doing is cracking off, losing your bopper. And it, the stiffness gives you the accuracy as well. Sometimes, I mean, we're not going to be chucking far today, but sometimes on big rivers like the Trent or the Thames or the Lower Seven, you're chucking even 40, 50 yards to go to, to where you want to present your bait. And that's more than up to the job. We're also releasing a smaller version. So a little a smaller bopper, which I would use on a strong fishing rod. So I've got I've actually got one clips up here today on my two and a half pound test curve big water rod, which will be ample. It's, it's, it's very similar to casting a feeder. It's, it's sort of the same sort of bait application as a feeder. So if you just wanted a quick little top up, say if you're maggot fishing and you've you've sat over four or five pints and you just want to top up before you put a rig in or after you've just had a fish and you want to put a little bit more bait in, I've literally just clipped that onto my bolt and run kit. So I've took the feeder off and clipped the bopper on and then it's good to go for a little quick top up. That is a little bit lighter, that one. Again, it's got, um, it's got interchangeable weights. So you've got three weights there if you want to make it heavier. If, you, if you're putting in or if you feel you're struggling with your rod, you can take a little bit of weight out. If you don't want to make so much splash, if you want it to go in quieter, if there's fish in the swim, again, take a little bit more weight out. Or if you're fishing really deep venues, put a little bit more in, get it straight down onto the bottom so you know where you're fishing. Right, so I've led it up, I've clipped up, now I'm going to put my initial feed in using the large bopper. So, a simple barbel mix, you've got my boilies, my, my range of pellets, all the, the sonia baits, ground baits. Um, so I'm just going to fill it up, nice and flush. 
clip it down, that's it. And that's ready to go into the drink now. So as I cast this, I'm going to hit the clip. I'm going to bring the rod back so I've got some loose lot. I want to, I want this, I want the bopper to to land on a semi-tight line. Obviously, if you hold it on a tight line, it's going to try and land flat on its nose. So I want to follow it down like I would a lead. So when it touches the bottom, it's touching nose first, but I still want contact to feel it touch the bottom. So I'll show you what I mean. Right, so I'm going to go up and under, up, and then feel it down, and then it opens there. I've got a good contact on the bottom. But by pulling the rod back, I had enough slack in the line to feel it down to the bottom. And then I'll just give it a couple of little jiggles to make sure it empties. And then just whip it up. I need to do that clutch up. And as you can see, that bait is now on the riverbed. One of the major advantages of, of our new bopper is being able to bait up at range accurately on the big rivers. I've used conventional bait droppers in the past, the ones with a big round door, they don't fly very well and I've had the doors fall off. These are really well made. The fins mean, mean they fly really true through the air. So you can fish at range on the big rivers, just like this. Check it out. flow behind it hasn't bolted off anywhere. Even in these cold conditions at the end of the season, a nice chub turns up. Nice trench chub, sort of probably nudging five, I reckon. Certainly deep enough. Beats being at work. So there you go, that's how I go about approaching baiting up on big rivers. Grab yourself a bopper, they're available very soon in all Coram stockists. And also a quick thank you to Ashfield Angling for letting us use their venue.